Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back along to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of the 90 Min Football Network. If you're watching us on video, you'll be thinking, where the hell is he at? Well, I did promise you guys that from Monday to Friday at 4.30pm, we'd be dropping uh, a new show. And, uh, and I said that I was going to stick to that commitment, and I absolutely am. So if you're wondering where I am, I am in central London at the moment, um, in the borough area, uh, doing some work, got a few meetings here and you can see the shard in the background lovely setting uh the weather's not so good but i'm gonna brave it uh, for as long as this podcast runs um so yeah big hello to everybody joining us uh, big hello to everybody listening in on the audio as well hope you're all good hope you're all well um i was thinking about what to discuss today uh, we talked obviously at length yesterday about bakayo saka the news concerning his new contract We talked uh, a little bit about some of the injury concerns that Arsenal have heading into uh, the return of the Premier League this weekend. And I guess that's kind of where I want to really double down today because, you know, I don't know if it's a bit of PTSD and I use that term lightly, obviously, because it's in a football sense as opposed to a serious sense. Um, But, you know, I just I've been thinking over the last sort of 24 hours about how it all went wrong for Arsenal last season and I've been having a lot of conversations with fellow Gooners and and fellow content creators and and people sort of working in the space. And one of the the sort of common sort of conversations that seems to come up is, well, Arsenal have really strengthened in terms of their depth. Arsenal are in a position nowadays where they can cope with injuries, where they can cope with key players being absent without the level dropping off too much. And I actually disagree with that to a point. Um, I think there are certain positions on the pitch that... Mikel Arteta has addressed you know you think about the right back position okay if it's not Ben White it's Tommy Asu you can make a case that this season Ben White's been much better than Tommy Asu but generally speaking you're looking at a very competent replacement you look at the left back position and you look at somebody like Kieran Tierney who not the same type of player as Zinchenko but is a certainly uh, or is certainly a competent left fullback uh, that you would bring into the team without too many concerns or worries changes the way we play a little bit but it wouldn't be the end of the world if Kieran Tierney uh, had to play uh, in a, a game of note and a game of significance which every single game that we play now between now and the end of the season is going to be that but then you move into other areas like in the center of midfield and you start to worry you know i've talked about it over and over again the drop off when thomas Partey is not in the side is just so significant and it impacts the way that we play and sort of just sitting down working everything out last night and and starting to look ahead to the weekend as we prepare to get into gear for the the premier league's return and you know put together a preview obviously for the leeds united game which is coming up i just started to think about a lot of the problems that we have at the moment and i'd be lying if i said i wasn't nervous now maybe my problem here is that i'm looking too far ahead maybe the issue is that i'm looking at liverpool manchester city big big games to come for the Gunners and maybe if I look at the Leeds game coming up at the weekend in isolation I won't feel as concerned and as panicked but just coming off the back of this international break we still don't really know if William Saliba is going to be available for Leeds we still don't know if Thomas Partey is going to be available for Arsenal um, on Saturday and we don't know the extent of the injury that Kieran Tierney suffered last night playing for Scotland that's another one at the hands of Rodri. Um, Congratulations to Scotland, by the way, and congratulations to our Scottish listeners because that was a really great win for the Scottish national team. You know, fully deserved. Really, really pleased for them. But obviously, the downside to that was we lost Kieran Tierney. He had to go off with an injury. And now you're looking at the Arsenal squad and it is starting to look a little bit thin. You know, people talk about the depth that we have in the forward areas now and how that's improved, and I agree. But is Eddie Nketiah going to be back for the weekend? We still don't know. Is Emil Smith-Rowe now fit enough to actually help the team? Again, there's question marks over that because what we saw of him uh, against Brentford was certainly not the Emil Smith-Rowe we've come to know and he certainly didn't look ready. Played for the under-21s, but the level of under 21's international football in terms of the intensity, how competitive it is. Can you really compare that with the Premier League? And so I think there are still a lot of areas in this team that I'm not confident in the backup options. And so if you're talking about 
Partey potentially being out, Saliba potentially being out, um, Kieran Tierney potentially being out, Tommy Asu is definitely out, Eddie and Ketia could be out still as well. All of a sudden, you've taken away like five options from uh, what gave that squad maybe that little bit more depth than it had in the past. And in some areas, in the case of Saliba and Partey, it really significantly weakens our eleven. Even if we're only looking at Leeds in isolation, I don't want to play Rob Holding at centre-back. And I certainly wouldn't feel as confident as I should going into that game if we had Holding at centre-back and Jorginho in midfield. Is this the game rather than the one at Anfield? Obviously that you'd prefer to be without those players if you could only have them available for one. Well, yeah, of course, that's an obvious thing to say. But... You know, no game in the Premier League is a given. The significance of every single one of these games is so huge that you can't help but feel nervous and you can't help but feel concerned. And, you know, maybe it's the anxiety that comes with being in a title race. Not just a title race, but a title race in which you're being hunted down by one of the greatest sides this division has ever seen. Is that what's playing on my mind here? I just, I don't know. I, I I didn't really sit down and look, sort of map out a long episode today because, um, you know, there, there isn't any real major breaking news at the time of recording. We know uh, that Arsene Wenger has been inducted into the Premier League Hall of Fame and we'll talk about that in a little bit because I think that's obviously uh, fantastic news and, um, you know, I'm absolutely delighted for him on that front. But I, I just wanted to kind of do an episode where I just sort of reeled off some of my thoughts and the thoughts I've been having over this last sort of you know, 18, 24 hours because I was worried as it was about going into the weekend. And I know that Kieran Tierney probably wouldn't start against Leeds regardless because that position has very much been made Alexander Zinchenko's. But just losing another body, losing another player, potentially. Again, we don't know the extent of these problems. And you'd hope that when you look at how Arsenal have been throughout the course of the season so far, where they've tried to play things down um, in terms of not giving too much away to the media. They've been very secretive, very hush-hush. You'd like to think or hope that actually the, the prognosis is a lot more positive than maybe uh, the initial injuries or, or the initial news that those players have gone down injured sort of um, suggests that it, it, it could be, you know. So maybe it's that. I, I really don't know, but I'm sort of sitting here just mulling over the weekend's game and it's funny because although as I keep saying we have improved the squad in certain areas like Leandro Trossard has been an unbelievable addition Jorginho has been a good addition um, there still feels like some real weaknesses and flaws in this Arsenal team and the more I've been thinking about this the more I've come to the conclusion that when people say oh I trust this Arsenal side now when I say I trust this Arsenal side, I mean I trust Ramsdale, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Zinchenko, Xhaka, Partey, Odegaard, Martinelli, Saka, Jesus. That's the team I trust. OK, you want to throw one player in there, maybe a Trossard. You lose one player at centre-back, you've got to take Saliba out and you put Rob Holding in for a game at home to a side who are in the relegation scrap. In theory, that should be OK. And I'm OK with that to a point. But then you start talking about losing multiple options. And in particular, when it comes to Saliba and Partey, they are so, so key. They are so key to the spine that has allowed Arsenal to develop and push on and get themselves to a point where they're competing for the Premier League title. And I keep saying it like, is it my nervousness? Is it my anxiety um, because of how desperately I want Arsenal to go on and finish the job? Probably. Probably. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk about that because I think, um, you know, these injuries, these problems that we are facing off the back of an international break. Of course, the Saliba injury was sustained prior to that. But the Partey injury that he picked up, the slight issue that he felt in his right leg is as a consequence of him being on international duty. The injury that Kieran Tierney's now picked up is as a consequence of him playing for Scotland. And it's so frustrating to have an international break at this point in the season, going into that final stretch of what will be your most important games by a distance. It's just, it's just not ideal and, and it's really angered me and frustrated me and caused me to worry about what the rest of the season holds. Am I just having a bit of a wobble today? Maybe, maybe I'll see Arsenal go out there at the weekend, wipe the floor with Leeds United and I'll feel completely differently. And much better and much more confident in what we're able to achieve and what we can achieve. But just for the time being, um, 
I am a little bit worried and a little bit concerned that I'm sort of eagerly awaiting some updates on their fitness. What I will say, though, is I don't expect to get any updates prior to the game on Saturday. I don't expect Mikel Arteta in his press conference to give too much away. He's very hush-hush, as we keep saying. I wouldn't be surprised if he just said, look, everybody's going to be assessed in the final training session and we'll take it from there. That is the Mikel Arteta way. But it doesn't do any good for my nerves, I have to say that. Um, the other big bit of news today is, of course, that uh, Arsene Wenger uh, has been inducted into the Premier League Hall of Fame. I cannot think of anybody more deserving of that. Um, you know, a, a real pioneer, somebody who came in and I believe changed the face of English football open people's eyes to the idea of scouting from abroad, open people's eyes to a different style of football, uh, brought another level of professionalism. You know, you often hear players from the sort of era prior to, to Arsene Wenger's, whose careers overlapped with maybe George Graham's time at the club, and then Arsene Wenger's talking about how different it was, diet. Um, all of those things, you know, were really sort of stepped up and brought into play. And a lot of what you see now, a lot of, in my opinion, the talk around the Premier League being the best league in the world now, which it probably is, and it certainly is commercially, is partly because of how Arsene Wenger came in and showed everybody he was such an innovator and, and an unbelievable person, um, an unbelievable guy. And look, at the end of his Arsenal career, it went south, OK? And we were annoyed about certain things and we were disappointed with how the team was performing and a lot of people felt it was the right time for him to move on. And I'm not even saying that that is wrong, but... Now that the dust has settled a little bit and you can look back on his Premier League career and what he achieved with Arsenal Football Club and what he also brought to the English game, you know, his legacy will, will last forever in my opinion. And I think he's a, a, a real worthy addition of the Premier League Hall of Fame. I mean, what is a Hall of Fame? It feels to me a bit of a, an attempt from uh, the Premier League to kind of Americanize our sport. Um, I know that might not sit right with people but I think there are things in British sport for example European sport that are very different to American sport and I think there are uh, commercial opportunities if you take some of those routes i.e. the Hall of Fame thing um, and I think that the Premier League obviously feel like that's the way to go and I'm okay with it as long as the right people are inducted into it but Arsene Wenger is certainly worthy so I wanted to congratulate the great man on that because um, whatever happened towards the end of his Arsenal career his impact not just on Arsenal Football Club but on the Premier League cannot be denied and um, yeah he's very very deserving of that accolade in my opinion um, I'm going to leave it there. A uh, very, very short edition of the show. Um, I told you that we'll be bringing you an episode Monday to Friday, 4.30 p.m. UK time without fail. I am recording this a little bit earlier on in the day, around about 2, 2.30 p.m. So if any big news breaks in the meantime, I apologize. Uh, but I did want to talk about the injuries piling up, how it's making me feel, uh, the concern that I feel around that. And... Um, and I also wanted to congratulate, of course, the great Arsene Wenger on his achievement. If you uh, haven't done so already and you're watching us on YouTube, please do leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand spanking new. Let me know in the comments, how concerned are you by the sort of mini injury crisis that Arsenal seem to be suffering with at this moment in time, based on what we know at this moment in time, going into what is undoubtedly the biggest period of games that Arsenal will participate in or have participated in for the best part of two decades like how are you feeling let me know um, tomorrow obviously uh, we'll be back at base and we'll bring you a much more in-depth episode and we'll begin our look ahead to that game against Leeds at the weekend we'll also look at some of the rest of the weekend's Premier League fixtures uh, what do we need to happen uh, can Liverpool get something at Manchester City for example would that uh, do us a huge favour of course it would but is it possible is the big question that we're going to be asking so uh, full in-depth show coming to you guys tomorrow but my commitment is to bring you one every single day so here I am in the wind and I think it's just started to rain uh, down in London with the shard behind me um, I would say enjoying the view but I'm actually freezing so I'll catch you all later uh, cheers for tuning in all the best oh gust of wind see ya